Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mark Romalek here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for September 14th, 2021, at around 4, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including Tropical Storm Nicholas, which is still impacting portions of Texas and Louisiana, and two additional storms that might be forming over the next several days, so let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wild look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we have our ducks lined up in a row, per se. We have three systems to monitor the remnants here of, of Tropical Storm, still Tropical Storm Nicholas. We have Invest Area 96L and Invest Area 95L back here. And uh, Nicholas will continue to be a threat over the next several days. 96L may be a small threat here to portions of the Carolinas. And then we'll be watching 95L as it generally tracks towards the west northwest here and could get close to portions of the greater antilles within the next week to 10 days or so so looking here at nicholas against sustained winds right now still around 40 miles per hour and again the pressure has risen quite substantially this is expected to be a tropical storm or a tropical depression uh, really, within the next couple of hours, it's already beginning to decouple from the low and mid-level circulation at this point. And this is going to be moving very slowly. You can see the timestamp here on Thursday morning. This is still a tropical depression, only a couple hundred, a couple hundred miles uh, inland over portions of central Louisiana, uh, over towards the Baton Rouge Hammond area, uh, sort, sort of towards that area, towards like Lafayette. And uh, those areas will be impacted directly by this, and you will probably take the core of this. Again, sustained winds will come down, so we're not going to be seeing anything like an Ida-type repeat. But the problematic factor here with the slow motion is going to be the heavy rainfall threat. Rainfall amounts over the next several days for at least the next three days could exceed over 6 to 10 inches in spots from Mobile, uh, from Mobile Alabama, in the western Florida uh, panhandle all the way through New Orleans and to near the Hammond and La Place and Baton Rouge region, uh, which has just been absolutely devastated by flooding and surge issues caused by Ida uh, only a couple of short weeks ago. So unfortunately, the relief isn't going to get much of any better here because we're going to have heavy rainfall. We've already had flash flood warnings for portions of the New Orleans metro region uh, and I do suspect that Pontchartrain could flood over once again. Very susceptible. We saw that here with Ida. But again, uh, this is going to be a real threat over the next several days. So make sure you pay attention to that. And the threat for tornadoes does exist as well. So pay attention if you are in that area to your local media and weather service office for official information. Taking a wider look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we are still monitoring two additional systems out there, Invest Area 96L and Invest Area 95L. Both of these have relatively decent chances of developing with 95L at a 90% over the next several days or so. And this will likely go on to at least be a tropical depression, if not a tropical storm. And we'll be watching for any sneaky developments here out of 96L, which we'll take a look at now. During the last several days, we've had a broad upper level low. We can see this here indicated by the water vapor satellite imagery. We've had a broad upper level disturbance over the last several days, which has been aiding in additional convection across this area. And uh, this upper level low is beginning to weaken and retrograde westward. And we also notice that there's a pretty sharp uh, tropical upper trosophere trough here that is digging in and this is again part in because this upper level low so we notice that there's a ridge here kind of separating and this tr the, this tut that's in here there is a lot of diffluent flow aloft here which again is also aiding in that additional convection that's out here but we notice that there is still some vertical shear and if we jump back here to the visible uh, zoomed in satellite loop here we can tell that most of the convection is getting festered off towards the north and east and getting blown away from any established circulation that is trying to develop in this region. That's not to say that one couldn't develop and a circulation is more than likely going to develop with the amount of convection and latent heat release uh, in this environment. But by and large, there is still a lot of shear and that's not really going to change here. If we take a look here at the GFS forecast, this is the 18Z run valid for, or I'm sorry, this is the 12Z run valid for 2 p.m. this afternoon. 
And we already notice again this broad upper level ridge out here that's now beginning to shear uh, Nicholas rapidly here. But we also notice this tut that's in here. And this trough here is again responsible for creating some of that diffluent flow aloft, but is going to be shearing 96L as it begins to move off towards the north and west. And we can see that here in the model that we don't really have a favorable environment that actually sticks. And in fact, we have a series of waves uh, of troughs rather to the north that are coming by from moving from west to east. And this creates just a reinforcement of this trough here. And again, there's a pretty high shear amount in this region and no real storm can actually form. Now, at some point, uh, again, near Bermuda, there does become a little bit more of a favorable pattern here after this particular time. This may allow for uh, some additional development here down the road where we might see additional development near Bermuda at the moment. Not saying that's the most likely situation, but we could see some redevelopment of a system out near Bermuda if indeed that's where it tries to go. A 50 millibar vorticity kind of shows this a little bit. Again, you can kind of see some of that uh, action here off the northeast coast there. And again, nothing really happening down at the low levels near Bermuda. Now, shifting our attention back eastward here, we have another system to talk about here. This is Invest Area 95L. And this is now emerged off the coast of Africa during the day today and is now beginning its journey across the main development region of the Atlantic. Now, we can already tell here that we have fairly decent mid-level circulation here, and you can kind of see it's trying to pull in uh, some of the you know moisture and additional rotation from the south here and kind of curling it around on this northern end. So this is suggesting that we're definitely trying to get a consolidation of a low-level circulation in this region at this time. Now, because of the fact that this hasn't rapidly developed over the last several days, and developed straight when it came off the coast of Africa, this has led to some of the model changes that we've been seeing. If we take a look here at the GFS forecast in the A50 millibar vorticity, we can see what's going on here. We have this area of vorticity south of the Cabo Verde Islands, and this is the main system to be watching during the next several days. Now on the GFS, it actually develops a small but robust circulation, and out here by day five, this is a fairly potent storm that is sitting here several hundred miles uh, to the east of Bermuda. This is uh, sitting roughly about 460 nautical miles away from Bermuda during this time. Now, the upper level environment uh, during this time, though, will be coming increasingly unfavorable. Now, one of the things is that we have this tut that is still out here, and that's beginning to shear the storm and beginning to create a pretty unfavorable environment. Now, one of the things that's going to be very crucial is what happens with this Bermuda system. In most instances, a lot of the modeling from earlier had a stronger Bermuda system and ended up having a stronger tut that was out here sharing 95L. But in this case, since we really don't have a storm that actually develops fully from 96L, the tut is a little bit weaker, but it's still there. And whatever comes into this environment is going to get sheared pretty heavily. And we can kind of see in the GFS, this briefly becomes a hurricane here on the GFS and then considerably weakens it uh, down into a, a kind of a low end tropical depression or low end tropical storm or tropical depression at this time. And we notice that now we got ridging and an upper level anticyclone that is now also setting up, but is displaced from our storm. And this continues to be undergoing some pretty significant problems during the next several days. Now, in terms of the steering components, we can look here at the 500 millibar height anomalies to kind of give an idea of what we might be dealing with here. Now, I reckon that this is, again, a little bit uh, overdone here with the troughiness, and the GFS has a poleward east bias, which means that, again, the GFS is always going to be further north and east than actual, um, you know, than actual observations and trends in the real world. So 
take this for granted. Again, models are guidance. They are not gospel. So take this for, take this, you know, as a possible solution, but it's not necessarily something that is guaranteed to happen. We have this ridging that's setting up over here across the Midwest and across portions of Lower Canada, but we have this troughiness that is embedded in here, and that's creating a natural weakness in this ridge and allowing a storm that here would be slightly stronger to feel some of that mid-level tug in the atmosphere and get pulled more towards the north and west. And that's seen on some of the models here. If we go back to models like the Euro, the European model here developed a storm near Bermuda from 96L and that actually begins to tug on our system out here. We also have a storm that develops here in the long range. And again, not really sure this is really going to happen, but this is just one feasible solution during this time. So my keys to the game are going to be to see how this ridge is actually modeled over the next several days. Again, the trend has been for, it's kind of all over the place, but the trend has been for a little bit more ridging uh, than this deep upper level trough to be kind of ejecting in here and taking everything, you know, out to sea. There's been a little bit more ridging in the models. The GFS, you know, the Euro, we can take a look here at the Euro uh, 500 millibar height anomalies. And one of the things that, again, this type of pattern here would facilitate this ridging here facilitates a storm to go generally westward except you have this area of low pressure here which would likely be a bona fide tropical cyclone and that is where the problem comes into play so a lot is going to depend here on what exactly happens with the combination of 96 l and the ridging to the north and if 96 l does become a tropical storm and does manage to break down that ridging across North America uh, and across, you know, parts of the North Atlantic, it is possible that 95L would turn harmlessly out to sea if it was a stronger storm. If this isn't a stronger storm and it's just a weak wave, there could be some remnants that do make it into the Caribbean after that time. And for sake here, the 200 millibar wind pattern in the Caribbean Again, it doesn't really become all that favorable unless if you're right near Jamaica. So we'll be watching everything. But again, this is very long range and I'm not completely sold on everything that's going on here. So we got a lot to monitor over the next several days. Of course, Nicholas is still the imminent threat to land. We'll be watching for some potential impacts to North Carolina from 96L, but I'm not deeply concerned about that at the moment. All right. With that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.